Ukraine has created a military commandant's office in Sudza, Kursk Oblast. The commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Swarsky, informed President Volodymyr Zelensky about this at a meeting of the headquarters. According to him, the search and destruction of the enemy in Sudza and three other populated areas in the Kursk region has been completed. A military commandant's office has been created in order to maintain law and order and to meet the primary needs of the population in the controlled territories. Its head, Major General Moskalov, has been appointed, SWRSKY said. The commander-in-chief added that in certain areas the defense forces advanced from 500m to 1.5 km into enemy territory. In total, since the beginning of the operation in the Kursk region, our troops have advanced 35 km through fighting. We have taken control of 1,150 square kilometers of territory, 82 populated areas. The situation is under control, he summed up. President Volodymyr Zelensky did not comment on the headquarters in detail, but only highlighted key topics, the front, weapons, prisoner exchange and legislative initiatives. He promised to provide details later. Ukraine has already launched a hotline for residents of the Kursk region who wish to evacuate. Russians who fled border areas in panic after the Ukrainian armed forces broke through say they were forced to abandon their homes and flee as local government control collapsed. Panic quickly spread through villages in the Kursk region of southern Russia as the Ukrainian armed forces staged the first foreign incursion into Russian territory since World War II. The British publication The Telegraph writes about this. We don't understand why they don't tell the truth. One woman told the Russian newspaper Kommersant. On TV they kept saying, this is an emergency. What emergency situation is there when there are foreign tanks on our soil? This is already a war. Russians are outraged. On Sunday, Ukrainian forces released videos showing them tearing down Russian flags from government buildings in villages around the small town of Sudza, 75 miles southwest of Kursk. Other videos showed dozens of bodies of dead Russian soldiers scattered across fields or lying on the edges of forests. The head of the Belovsky district, which borders Sudza Nikolai Volobuyev, also admitted that Ukrainian soldiers had already advanced into his region and gave the order for evacuation. The situation is stable, but very tense. Today we do not understand all the problems in the border areas, he said. A Ukrainian security official told AFP that thousands of troops were involved in the attack, which saw about 600 square kilometers of Russian territory seized. In scenes similar to those seen across Ukraine after Russia's full-scale invasion in February 2022, tens of thousands of people were now fleeing the advance, pouring into Kursk in cars, on bicycles and squeezing into ambulances, clutching a few bags of hastily gathered belongings. Russian media reported that 20 evacuation centers had been set up for people fleeing the border region, but they quickly became overcrowded. Foreign soldiers armed with NATO equipment entered our land and within hours our city was reduced to rubble, their spokesman said, ignoring a woman sobbing nearby. We lost our land, our homes, we fled under fire, mostly without papers. Another man accused the Russian military of failing to protect the country. He said the evacuation had been chaotic, with people forced to flee in their underwear and t-shirts, and children wrapped in rags. In one cut-off village, people had to swim across the river as best they could, he said. Despite the Kremlin's orders to its propaganda arm to downplay the scale of the Ukrainian attack, the shock and bewilderment of the people has filtered through to the usually accommodating Russian media. Ukraine has begun to create a powerful fortified area in the occupied territory of the Kursk region, which includes a field hospital, full-fledged strongholds and dugouts. This is reported by the Telegram channel Vichik OGPU, which is connected to Russian security forces. According to information received from the Russians, the Ukrainian military continues its offensive and is conducting military operations in several directions at once. Local media and Z-War correspondents publish information with a significant delay, which is due to the delay in incoming information. Ukrainian sabotage groups are actively operating in the region, striking at the rear areas of the Russians, setting up ambushes and also confusing the Russian command. 
According to the channel's sources, the main battles are taking place in the area of the village of Korenevo, which is located 30 kilometers from Sudza. Ukraine may have taken a first step toward a strategy change in its defense against the Russian invasion. That's how General Spindel, assistant professor at the University of New Hampshire in the U.S., described the recent developments in western Russia's Kursk region. Ukraine cannot continue to fight this war in the same way it has been for the past two years. It just simply doesn't have the manpower or weapon stores to do so, said Spindel, a foreign policy and security expert. Russia is much bigger and has a larger military and Ukraine can't continue fighting Russia on equal footing, she said. It needs to embrace much more of an asymmetric style war and bring the conflict into Russia if it wants to have hope of staying in the fight. Spindle said this means that instead of confronting the Russian army in many respects superior on the open battlefield, Ukraine would need to employ tactics more appropriate to the strengths and armaments available to Ukrainian forces, exactly what appears to be happening in Kursk. I see this operation in Russia as Ukraine's attempt to slightly shift its strategy. She told DW, it is showing that Russian territory is no longer off limits and that Ukraine will attack Russian territory to force Russia to divert its forces from bombing and causing destruction in Ukraine.